Welcome dear students to video number 8 for standard 9 geometry chapter number 5 quadrilaterals. In the previous video we discussed practice set 5.4. Let us continue. This particular theorem is known as theorem of midpoints of two sides of a triangle. The segment joining midpoints of any two sides of a triangle is parallel to the third side and half of it. According to this, the given information, in triangle ABC, point P is the midpoint of segment AB and point Q is the midpoint of segment AC. We have to prove that PQ is parallel to BC and PQ is half of BC. In order to do this, we need to do a small construction. As you can see over here, produce PQ up to R such that PQ is equal to QR and draw segment RC. This is construction. Let us start. In triangle APQ, AQP, in triangle AQP, and triangle CQR. PQ is congruent to QR construction and AQ is congruent to QC. This is given information. Angle AQP is congruent to angle CQR because these are vertically opposite angles. Therefore, I have triangle AQP congruent to triangle CQR by SAS test of congruency. And on the basis of this, I can say that angle, this particular angle, PAQ is congruent to angle RCQ because this is corresponding angles of congruent triangles. And segment AP congruent to segment CR, corresponding sides of congruent triangles. Now, this particular statement, I am going to name as statement 1 and this statement is statement 2. So, from 1, I can say that since these are angles are congruent, I can say line AB is parallel to line CR because this angle and this angle is e are equal and they form alternate angles. So, if alternate angles are equal, the lines are parallel. And from statement 2, this is AP is congruent to CR. From here, I can say that now AP is congruent to PB. AP is congruent to PB because P is the midpoint. So, I can say PB is congruent to CR because AP is congruent to CR. So, all three are congruent. And segment PB is parallel to CR. Therefore, PBCR, this particular quadrilateral, is a parallelogram. Therefore, segment PQ, if this is a parallelogram, and therefore this segment PQ is parallel to BC. Opposite sides of parallelogram are parallel and also equal. And PR is equal to BC. But we know that PQ is half of PR. We have done it through construction. PQ and QR are equal. See over here. Therefore, PQ would be half of PR. And PQ, PR is equal to BC. If PQ is half of PR and PR is equal to BC, I can say that PQ is half of BC. Over here. And proved. So, what have we proved? We have proved that the segment joining midpoints of any two sides of a triangle is parallel to third side and half of it. So, this statement is parallel to this and this is half of this. Next is the converse of the previous theorem. So, what does the converse say? If a line drawn through the midpoint of one side of a triangle and parallel to the other side, then it bisects the third side. According to this, the given information, 
point D. Point D is the midpoint of side AB of triangle ABC. Line L passing through D and parallel to BC. Intersects AC in point E. We have to prove that AE is equal to EC. In order to do this, we have to take point F on line L such that D dash E dash F and DE is congruent to EF and we have to draw a segment CF. So this is construction. Now let us start. Line CF is parallel to AB. This we have done through construction. And AC is the transversal. So I can say angle DAC, this angle, and angle FCA, this angle, they form alternate angles. These angles are nothing but angle DAE is congruent to angle FCE. So in triangle, and this I am going to name as statement number 1. I am going to use this a little later. So this is my statement 1. Now in quadrilateral DBCF, this quadrilateral DBCF, I have DF, this line DF parallel to BC. And DB parallel to CF. The first one was given information. The second one is through construction. So I can say this quadrilateral DBCF is a parallelogram by definition because opposite sides are parallel. Segment DB, segment DB is congruent to segment CF because opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. This statement I am going to name as statement number 2. Also, I have DB congruent to AD. If DB is congruent to AD, this is my statement number 3. So, from 2 and from 3, I can say that segment AD is congruent to segment CF. This is statement 4. Now, in triangle ADE, this triangle and triangle CFE, angle AD, angle DAE is congruent to angle FCE. This is from 1. I have proved this over here, statement 1. Segment AD is congruent to segment CF. This is from statement number 4. And angle AED is congruent to angle FEC. Now this information is enough to prove this triangle and this triangle as congruent. But I have one more piece of information. Since two angles of this triangle and two angles of this triangle are congruent, I can say the third angle is also congruent, which is angle ADE is congruent to angle CFE, remaining angles of the triangle. So, from statement 1, 4 and 5, I can say triangle ADE is congruent to triangle CFE by ASA test of congruency. Now, since this triangle and this triangle are congruent, I can say that the sides are congruent as well. That is AE is congruent to CE. The reason is corresponding sides of congruent triangles. And since this are congruent, that means this is the midpoint. So line L bisects side AC. So line L bisects side AC. Hence proved. Next is practice set 5.5. Question number 1. In the figure, points X, Y and Z are midpoints of side AB, BC and AC of triangle ABC respectively. AB is equal to 5 cm, AC is equal to 9 cm and BC is equal to 11 cm. Find length of X, Y, Y, Z and X, Z. Now according to given information, AB is 5. AC is 9 and BC is 11. 
and in triangle ABC X and Y now see here X and Y are midpoints of side AB and BC respectively therefore XY is half of AC just now we proved midpoint theorem so according to midpoint theorem this side would be half of AC which is half of 9 centimeters and half of 9 is 4.5 so how much is XY 4.5 centimeters again we have to see the second side so in triangle ABC Y and Z are midpoints of side BC and AC respectively therefore side YZ is half of AB and AB is 5 so half of 5 is 2.5 so yz is 2.5 centimeters now the third side in triangle abc x and z are midpoints of ab and ac respectively given information therefore xz is half of bc midpoint midpoint theorem and bc is 11 so half of 11 is 5.5 centimeters so we have xy as 4.5 centimeters, yz as 2.5 centimeters, and xz as 5.5 centimeters. Question number two. In figure, quadrilateral PQRS and quadrilateral LMNR are rectangles. M is the midpoint of PR. We have to prove that SL is equal to LR and ln is half of sq let us start quadrilateral lmnr is a rectangle so lm is parallel to rn lm is parallel to rn these are opposite sides of a rectangle that is lm is parallel to rq because r dash n dash q this is my statement one and RQ is parallel to SP, opposite sides of rectangle. This is my statement number 2. So, if I compare statement 1 and statement 2, I can say that segment LM is parallel to SP, segment SP. This is my statement number 3. Now, in triangle RSP, this triangle RSP, M is the midpoint of PR, therefore LM, this is given information, M is the midpoint of PR is given information and segment LM is parallel to SP. This is from statement number 3. So, according to midpoint theorem, converse of midpoint theorem, I can say that L is the midpoint of SR. So, if L is the midpoint of SR, SL is equal to LR. So, my first part is proved. Now, let's go to the second part. We know that this particular quadrilateral is a rectangle and this also is a rectangle. And we know also know that diagonals of a rectangle are congruent. So, according to that, I can say that SQ is equal to PR. This is statement 5. And LN is equal to MR. This is statement 6. Now, I know that MR is half of PR because M is the midpoint of PR. This is statement 7. But MR is equal to LN. So, from statement 6 and 7, I can say that LN is half of PR. And PR is equal to SQ. See, look at statement 5 and look at statement 7. So, from 5 and this is this I am going to name as statement 8. It is not named here. This is statement 8. So, from statement 5 and statement 8, I can say that LN is half of SQ. Hence, proved. Question number 3. In figure, triangle ABC is an equilateral triangle. So, all sides are equal. 
and F, D and E are midpoints of side AB, BC and AC respectively. We have to show that triangle FED is an equilateral triangle. Let us start. In triangle ABC, F and E, F and E are midpoints of side AB and AC respectively, given information. Therefore, FE is half of BC, according to midpoint theorem, and this is statement 1. Again, in triangle ABC, this time D and E are midpoints of side BC and AC respectively. Therefore, this is given information. Therefore, DE is half of AB by midpoint theorem. This is statement 2. Similarly, in triangle ABC, D and F are midpoints of side BC and AB respectively. And therefore, DF is half of side AC. Again, midpoint theorem statement number 3. And we know that quadrilateral, A, sorry, we know that triangle ABC is equilateral. Therefore, AB is equal to BC is equal to AC, sides of an equilateral triangle. Now, let's multiply this statement by half. We get half BC is equal to half AC is equal to half AB. Now, this, look at this statement and look at these 1, 2 and 3. So, from 1, 2 and 3, I can replace this by FE is equal to DE is equal to DF. And if all sides of this particular triangle are equal, then I can say that this triangle, triangle FED, is an equilateral triangle by definition. Question number 4. In the figure segment PD, this segment PD is the median of triangle PQR. Point T is the midpoint of segment PD and QT just a minute okay I'll repeat point T is the midpoint of segment PD and QT produced intersects PR PR at point M we have to show that PM upon PR is equal to 1 upon 3. There is a hint. The hint is draw DN parallel to QM. So, we are going to start by doing that. We are going to draw DN parallel to QM such that M dash N dash R. Now, in triangle PDN, this triangle, T is the midpoint of segment PD and line TM is parallel to DN. This is construction. So, by converse of midpoint theorem, I can say that M is the midpoint of PN. So, I have PM is equal to MN. This is my statement 1. Now, in triangle QRM, this triangle, D is the midpoint of segment QR given information and DN is parallel to QM construction. Therefore, by converse of midpoint theorem, I can say N is the midpoint of MR and MN is equal to NR. This is my statement 2. So, now from 1 and 2, I can say that PM is equal to MN is equal to NR. This is statement 3. That means PM is equal to MN is equal to NR and this entire PR is PM plus MN plus MR. This is state next statement. So, I am going to look at this statement and this and this is what I get. PR is equal to PM plus PM plus PM because all three are equal. And this is 3 PM. So, I have PR upon or PM upon PR is equal to 1 upon 3. Hence proof. My dear students, this is all for now. We will meet in the next video. Till then, have a nice day. Thank you for watching.